What if I told you that becoming the top of your class is actually really easy? Huh? Here's how you can get ahead of 99% of the people in your class, in your school, and even the country and have the best academic year possible. So stay with me until the end of the video and I'll give you a step-by-step -step plan of how you can change this year and become the top of the top. So guys, let's not waste time and let's get straight into it. So who am I and why should you care? My name is Shola and I'm a fifth year dental student studying in London and I managed to get straight A stars and grade nine in both my GCSEs and my A level. I managed to get the top 2% of the country and managed to enter a Brussels School University as well for one of the most competitive degrees. So you're probably thinking, oh, she's just naturally smart, like she just naturally gets it, it doesn't take that much work. And some people just have a predisposition towards being smart, towards being clever and towards getting good grades. I'm here to tell you that you are wrong. For most of my school life, I just got mediocre oh. grades. They were okay, but it wasn't what I needed to get where I wanted to be. I managed to change the whole system of how I work. And these things that I changed could take you 10 minutes of each day to see a big, improvement. People think that's extremely hard to do this but the truth is it's actually really doable. Let's jump into step one which is acknowledge. If you're constantly finding excuses not to study, you're not doing enough, you're struggling all around, you're glued to your phone, this video is actually for you. Like this video was made for you because I was in the same shoes. Your first step is to acknowledge that you are the one who's holding yourself back. It's not your natural smartness, it's not anything like that, it's you at this point. The problem is not that you're not smart enough, not that you don't try hard hard enough but in fact that you choose instant gratification over delayed gratification so what are these instant gratification is when you get something quickly and it makes you happy so for example scrolling on social media TikTok, all of these apps are designed to give you instant gratification and because of how quickly you get the burst of dopamine it basically makes you addicted to those types of happiness rather than delayed gratification delayed gratification is when you don't instantly get the goal you don't instantly get the burst of dopamine but that does mean that it takes you a while to get it for example learn how to ride a bike you don't instantly get on a bike when you're a baby and just know how to ride it does take a while it takes a few falls and it takes a while until it's enjoyable but you endure it so that you can learn how to ride a bike the problem with always choosing instant gratification is that it means that you could be destined to be someone or to do something but because of your own self you are not going to get it and that is so disheartening to hear the way to get ahead of the curve to be the top of your class to get the best grades is to learn how to choose delayed gratification first this is not a one day process you're not just going to instantly snap and then become the top of your class it does take work and it does take a lot of discomfort mentally just to choose delayed gratification because we live in a world that's surrounded by so many hits of dopamine so many quick fixes so many things to distract you from what you actually want to do but you have to realize that you have to pick one over the other or one of them will eventually take over your life and you do want it to be the delayed gratification so that you can get a good degree get a good job get a good house all of that these things do take time but the first time you do it because you haven't really been doing it before it will take time to get used to it you will have to trust yourself that the work that you're doing will end up in a good way so the early mornings the late nights the sleeping early the waking up early all of these will be worth it in the end but how do you actually change yourself though is it possible this moves us to step two which is small adjustments so as i said before it is a small gradual change or you'll just stop doing it i'm sure you've done new year's resolution before when you set yourself the most highest targets ever like I'm gonna go gym every day, I'm gonna study for like five hours every day. Do you end up doing it? You may do it for maybe a day or two or maybe a week or maybe even a month. But after that, you're never to be seen in the gym again. You're never to be seen studying like that again. And that's because you can't instantly switch to something that your body is not used to. It's just not gonna work and you're gonna burn out. You have to make small changes, which will ultimately make big changes in your overall life and get you to the top of your class. And these are the things that top students do day in and day out. It doesn't even take that long. It could take like 10, 15, 15 minutes to do these things and if you do these correctly this is a game changer one of the first things that i recommend is understand first take notes later the biggest mistake i see a lot of people making and i used to make this as well when i went to class i would find it so stressful because i would feel like the teacher is speaking at like thousand miles per hour there's so many slides there's like slides just changing 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 and i feel like it's a race against time to just write down everything but you actually just need to stop and calm down you have to realize that you actually need to understand what is in class before you write notes because if you don't understand it you're literally just going to write notes on everything once you understand the topic you do realize that when you write your notes it's so much more condensed it's much more simplified and it's basically all you need to revise it's not just copying the slide or copying the textbook that's because you need to comprehend what you're writing before you write it otherwise you're just wasting your time at that point what i really recommend to do before your classes is to read over the topic that you're going to do you're probably going to think this is going to take a long time but honestly it could just be a quick skim over the textbook making some really basic notes 
notes that you'll add to in the lessons and looking through the potential exam questions that come up for this topic. This basically helps you to pick out what actually matters and what deserves to go in your notes. The benefit of doing this especially is when you're reading the textbook or watching videos to understand the topic, you can basically go to the class and ask your teacher the things that you don't understand. So this helps you to identify any gaps of knowledge or understanding and present them to your teacher so that you can get ahead of the class and make sure you don't leave anything behind because it's always so hard to understand things for the first time when you're revising. It's better to just do it as you progress through the year and that makes studying so much easier in the long run. Trust me on that one. The second major, major tip is to make the shift from notes to flashcards and active revision. I'm telling you now, notes are not going to save you in your exam. I love those pages where I see the calligraphy, I see the word art, I see the different pictures and all of that. It's cute, yeah, but will it save you in the exam? No, it won't. The truth is, most of the time, the people who get the best grades have like the messiest book. Like, it's just not really giving aesthetically. It's quite very basic, it's very condensed. Like, it might have a few colors in there, some highlighters, but it's not like something that you would post on Instagram. It's basically just notes. And that is the purpose of it. When you think about it, all of these notes which are pretty, yes, it's nice, it's nice to look at. At the end of the day, you can't take this pretty notebook into the exam hall. You just take your brain. That's why it's important to focus more on active revision, especially from the start of the year, and start making your resources from the very start. See, after each day or each few days, you want to start converting your lessons into flashcards. And what I mean by this is that you don't need to make every single slide, every single point a flashcard. Only the things that seem examinable. So things that you think they could actually ask you on. Don't include anything that is not on your syllabus or specification. And to be honest, this is the part that takes the most time as a student is prepping your resources. And that kindly brings me to today's sponsorship, which is Cramify. So if you haven't heard of Cramify, you are missing out. Cramify is the latest AI technology which will basically help you become the top student with the minimal amount of work. So as you guys know, note taking, making revision flashcards, these are the most time consuming activities and ultimately one of the most difficult parts of learning. It can take hours and hours and at the end of it you might not even be able to understand the content and that is where Cramify comes in. Cramify basically condenses your notes, can make exam questions and can even make flashcards with just a click of a button. Do you know how crazy that is guys? That's actually crazy. All you need to do is drag the content that you want to condense for example if it's a few pages of a pdf you can just drag this into the website and then it basically creates a study guide which condenses all of the different parts of your notes into mini topics which makes it so much easier to read and understand it also has key takeaways which show us what really matters in the topic subjects such as biology or chemistry can be very overwhelming you don't even know what you need to know and it's just a lot on each page so having key takeaways basically helps you to summarize the content and know what truly matters and what you should make sure that you understand the most i think honestly the most cool feature for me is the fact that Cramify can make exam style questions. As you guys know from all of my videos exam style questions are the best way to replicate the exam environment and ultimately get the best grades in your exam. This not only consolidates the information but also preps you so much because it basically makes unique exam questions you probably haven't seen before which are directly related to your notes so it helps you to see if you truly understand your note. Make sure to check out Cramify today and supercharge your study sessions it is actually going to be a game changer for this academic year. Use the link in my description to check it out. So let's move on to another key part of small adjustments. So each little test that you have in exams, these class tests, these mocks, they may seem unimportant or a bit annoying in retrospect. Like why is my teacher setting me this mock when I have my real exams to revise for in three months? I'm telling you now, these tests can make or break your final exam. The fact that they're in exam conditions and you can't open your textbook, you can't open your notes, shows you exactly what is in your brain at that moment and the mistakes that you're always making. If you make these mistakes now and identify these gaps now, they basically helps you to understand what you need to do before the exam in order to get the maximum amount of grades. So see this as like a checklist. If you get zero marks on a question, that topic needs help and you need to go over that topic and topic specific question. But the problem is a lot of people don't take these mocks seriously. They don't revise for them. They just think oh, it's not that deep. And that basically dampers your progress and puts you at the back of the class because you basically think that because you have to revise for this big exam, you don't need to take this little one seriously. Each one that you revise for basically consolidates the information helps you to see your silly mistakes that you might even make in the final exam and just gets you one step closer to getting the best grades possible so I really recommend even though it seems stressful in the time if you start to take these tests seriously from the start this means that you'll feel so much more prepared for the actual exam and how do you get ready for mock? I've made a video before on how to make timetables and I basically split this into an everyday timetable for like the majority of the year and an exam season timetable this one will be more specific towards mock season so when 
it comes to block season, you want to see your grades, check the subjects that you've been struggling in the most, and then prioritize the ones which need the most help by giving them the most hours. Now, step three is discomfort. So as you guys know, if you want to become an athlete, if you want to become an Olympian, it's going to hurt a little bit. So let's say that you have your average show, an Olympic athlete, who is going to do better? So the athlete is ultimately going to be making these changes to their life. They're going to be changing their diet. They're going to be training every day. They're going to be doing everything focused on their next coming race. The average show is not really going to be doing all of that. But then when it comes to the race, who's going to win? The Olympian, because they've been doing these small changes and I'm sure there's times that where they feel tired, they want to give up, they just have discomfort. This means that it's going to hurt. And when you're learning something, when you're studying, there should be a degree of kind of mental discomfort. If you're always studying the easiest topics ever, you're studying cell biology, you're studying addition, you're studying basic algebra all the time throughout the whole year, you're going to realize that this comfort that you have from doing topics that you like will ultimately lead to your downfall. Like you will be in the exam regretting, oh, why didn't I just revise this? Why didn't I just try harder? But if you always make sure you have a degree of discomfort you're always pushing yourself to study topics that you're doing the worst in that you're getting the least marks in even though it feels unbearable at the time you will thank yourself so much more and every time you do something that is kind of painful the next time it gets less painful and it gets more easier almost everything is so much easier for you because you managed to go through that discomfort before the exam whenever you get a good grade do you ever regret how much you revise for it do you ever think oh like i can't believe i revised that much for this grade no you take the grade and you're happy you don't even think about how much you revised for it but when you get a bad grade, like, you know those bad grades when you see it and you just, your eyes widen and you're like, oh, like, I wasn't expecting it to be that bad. You almost always regret how little you studied for it or how you even revised for it. Like, your study methods, the way you revise it when you're not taking it seriously, when you're studying with friends and you guys are laughing and all of that. And you don't want your final exams to be like that. That's why you always need to push yourself. Like, obviously, don't burn out. Don't push yourself beyond your limits. But you know when you're in your comfort zone and you know when you're stretching yourself to do something that you wouldn't normally do. Those moments are what will help help you in your final exam. Another thing is to increase your study focus time. This is a gradual process. The way that I did it is that I first started off with doing 25 minute Pomodoro sessions. So I'll do 25 minute, five minute break. I'll do that four times. After the fourth time, I'll give myself a 30 minute break. That was good at first. And once I realized that I could do that and I could do that consistently, I then moved on to 40 minutes and then I'll take a 10 minute break, 40 minutes, 10 minute break. Then I moved on to 50 minutes and then you can even move on to one, two hours if that is what's meant for you. Me personally, I can't do two hours straight but for some people that is possible in these 25 minutes i'm telling you your phone out of sight out of mind or you have an app such as forest or flora which physically blocks you from going on your app these focus times are to be taken seriously it's not like a cute little oh let me just look on tiktok at the side and do flashcards no you're going to be focused completely on those flashcards in the moment nothing else one of the most important things for becoming the top of your class is discipline motivation will come and go most of the time you're not going to feel motivated like i know most of the time i can't home i'm like oh i just want to sleep i just want to play a game i just want to watch tv i don't do work but if i listen to that side of my brain do you think i'll be where i am right now no i wouldn't if i study for two hours then i get to enjoy the rest of my day if i study for two hours then i get to play my game i get to watch my show i get to become ahead i get to understand the class more i get to get an amazing grade in the end that's what you should be thinking about if you rely solely on motivation you won't get where you want to be and you'll probably live a life of regret when you ask and talk to people on their deathbed they have so many regrets of the things they didn't do but they hardly regret the things that they actually did do. What they regret is things like, I should have started dancing. I should have quit my job. I should have just did something else. Those are the things that people regret, the things that they didn't do. So you don't want to regret in your older years that, oh, I could have been here, but now I'm here because I didn't want to be disciplined. And there is mental discipline, like not going on your phone. That's actually quite hard. So what I recommend, especially for the start, is physical discipline. So your phone, give it to your friends, give it to your mom, dad, anyone, or lock it away. Like literally lock it away somewhere you can't get it or it's very difficult for you to get it or you can go to a library go to a quiet zone go to somewhere where it's almost embarrassing for you to be on your phone for the whole day because these places will force you to be in an environment where people are productive and people are doing their work put yourself in a position where you have no excuse but to do the work that you've set out to do and that is what will change everything for you so guys if you make small changes to your daily life like in this video you can go from being in the middle of your class not getting the grades that you want to becoming the top of your class becoming the top of the country and getting a amazing grades and results. I hope this video helps you and if it does be sure to comment down below and comment down below any other video ideas that you'd like to see from me. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Bye!